morning to the King of all kings and glorify his name forever. Let's give him praise and glory wherever we are in any part of the world. Let's thank him for all that he's done for us. Are you thanking God for the testimonies, for the miracles, for the signs and wonders? For all that God has done, let's go ahead and tell God thank you. Blessed be his name forever. In Jesus' most wonderful name, you do will testify. Whatever is a consign in your life shall end as a testimony. In the name of Jesus. See how far you are brothers. Worship God and expect today to be very exceptional in your life. Can make it me. Lord, I've, I've come, come to worship you. See how much you helped me. Lord. Boys, it was. Worship the King of all kings to glorify his name. See how far you have helped us. We have come to worship you, mighty God, that's not like you. Forever you're on the throne, worthy to be exalted, worthy to be glorified. We worship and adore you. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you all adoration. Blessed be your name forever. We adore you. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we have worshipped. Heavenly Father, we ask that you speak to us to your word. Envelope every word with your power. Let this anointing service be a special one. Let only Jesus be glorified. Holy Spirit, take over all the four services. Bless God's people all over the globe. That are connected to this service. In Jesus' mighty name. Let someone expecting a special testimony say, yeah. Give Jesus a big hand. You may be seated. All of you that came for evangelism yesterday, God reward you. 
But as whoever came yesterday was not for eye service. And all of you did not come, you are eye service people. Because you know I was in Shiloh, so many people did not come. Because you know I'm not around. That's how you know somebody who is an eye service Christian. If you did not come, just judge yourself as one eye service Christian. You shouldn't come because many did not come. Are you going to answer now? Because he felt he would be in Shiloh. There's no a bad child when parents are away. If you see a child, even parents will say, this boy is a bad boy. Because the father is not around. See the way he's doing. So all of you did not come. Judge yourself where you belong to, whether good or bad. <laughs> Glory to God. You know what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2? It said, For he said, I have heard thee in the time accepted, and in the day of salvation I have succumbed thee. Behold, now is the accepted time, behold, now is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. When? Today, whatever you're missing in your life will release to you. Amen. Salvation does not mean only altar call, it means everything that redemption offers. Whatever redemption offers that you don't have, I'm saying it with authority, he said today, not tomorrow. God is not a man that he should lie. Whatever you are missing, that is missing in your life, right in this service, the Holy Ghost will supply it. Amen. I'm speaking to someone, if you believe it, that amen confirms it. Amen. Well, I'll take a charge for 30 minutes and then we'll go to the anointing section for the remaining part of the service. Success or failure is not by accident. It's not by what? No, nobody fails by accident. Now, nobody succeeds by accident. If you follow the laws of success, you succeed. And if you follow the laws of failure, you fail. Nobody fails accidentally. If you say a student that will fail, you will know. You will not read. Those are the laws of failure in school. Everyone that failed, you will not read. One others are reading. So already, you are, it's not by accident you fail. You fail because you follow the principles of failure. And also to succeed, you also follow the principle of what? Success. The steps you take determine whether you succeed or fail. But here is an yami well to succeed, you must have a detailed plan. You must have a what? A detailed plan as a Christian. Those who fail to plan are planned to fail. The year is coming to an end. It's not every year you should even plan. Let me say this to you. Your plan should not be just one year because if you take, if you take a new year resolution, you won't be able to keep it. Don't say I'm taking a new year. No, that's not wisdom. Have a plan, and then every year you evaluate the plan to see whether you're, in track, you're on track or not. But don't just say, I'm taking New Year's No, that's not a plan. Plan. Have a long time what? Plan. And what you do in the New Year is to reevaluate it. And see, this plan I have, is it working or is it not working? If it's not working, then you adjust where you missed it. But to live a life without a plan is to play football without goalpost. Just imagine that football, how it will look like in your mental picture. Planning is written list, a written list of arranged actions. Written list of arranged what? Necessary to achieve your desired goal. A plan is a written list of arranged actions necessary to achieve your desired goal. It is creating a mental avenue, mental picture of your expectation. It is the key to success. One major cause of failure is action without positive reasoning and planning. When you begin to take steps, you have not planned, but you are taking what? Steps. Failure is sure. I can tell you many people why they fail is because they are doing practical things without planning. Without what? They even go into a project without seeing that they say, no, 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 let's just start anytime. No, you, that project will not work. You have to plan. You have to what? Plan. How far you go will be determined by how well you plan. There will be no future for anyone who does not plan. Who does not what? Plan. Because it is at the planning stage you take time to think. You take time to ponder on how to realize your dreams and goals. In Proverbs 24 and verse 3 and 4, I'll read the TLB, the Living Bible. It says, any enterprise is built by wise planning, becomes strong through common sense, and profits wonderfully by keeping abreast of the facts. Exactly. Okay. Luke 14 to the 8th. It says, for which of you intending to build a tower 
Sit it not down first and carry the course whether you have sufficient to finish it. It's a which person wants to build a tower. You want to live a big life. You want to live a successful life. You not sit down to look at your life whether you'll be able to make it or not. Is that clear? Glory to God. So you have to sit down to think because every successful man is a thinker. He's a what? And thinking is a principal tool for planning. Do that what plan is what? Thinking. He said, come, let us reason together. Prodigal son planned his way out of all the calamities he went through. He looked 57 to 18. He said, came to himself. That was planning. I said, I will arise and go to my father. And then he took a step. Is that true? Glory to God. He said, come, let us reason together. Come, let us reason together. Because planning not just good reasoning, eliminates struggles, terminates frustration, and guarantees progress. You will not fail. But in this service, I will just look at one and then we'll go to the anointing section. Tips for effective planning. Number one. Each service, I'll take one, one. Tips for effective what? Planning. Number one. Have a great picture of the future. Have a great picture of what? The future. Everybody should plan. Everybody should what? There's a trend in this part of the world where parents are now sending children overseas without planning. They'll have school fees for one year. They'll forget that the child has to go to school for four or five years. They'll have school fees for one year and the boy will say, when you go, you start working. Let me tell you something this. No work can make you pay school fees. You don't know? Because you have limited hours of work. School fees of 10000 to fourteen plus rent, apartment, Rest, no work can make you pay. You can only have work to pay some bills, but not school fees. You'll be able. Because as, as a student, they will only be able to pay a certain amount. But parents will send people abroad without planning that, look, I have school fees for one year. Then what if, when the boy goes to the second year, what am I going to How am I going to pay the school fees? Are you going to now? Now, they send the children one year, then the children begin to go out of school and go out of status. Poor planning. Poor what? Then they blame the devil. They put themselves under pressure. Everybody. Next year is coming. This is December. But people have not planned on how they will live. They plan for Christmas, which is good. They plan how they buy clothes. They plan how they buy things. They plan how they will be festival season. But have you planned how you pay school fees and house rent? Because by January you pay school fees. You now start fighting the principal and the headmaster. Start buying. Say, give me the name of the principal. I soak him in the blood that the man should be sick. How will he be sick? <laughs> he said, God, touch the principal. He's a wicked man. You will make trouble with them. No, it's poor. You should know that you're going to go for Christmas. I know whether the school fees and the Christmas holiday you want to take, put the two side by side. If it's not so, then send the money to your parents. They're very happy that you give them cash. You go to home, to houses where you don't even build. Maybe it's your brother's house. You go and give, become a problem to him. You come back. He says, I don't know, this is January. I believe God. They don't believe God, they plan. They do what? You don't believe God. Don't say, I believe God. God is going to provide. That's a stupid prayer. Plan. Take time to plan. Are you hearing me now? Have a great picture of the future. Now, in Genesis 13, 40 to 15, it says, And the Lord said unto Abraham, after the Lord was separated from him, Lift up now thy eyes and look from the place where thou art. Northward, southward, eastward, westward. For all the land which thou seest today will I give it unto thy seed for ever. The future you don't picture, you cannot feature. So you have to see the future. You have to see the what? The future. Picture it and say, okay, 2024 is by the corner. It's just a few days from now. It's by the corner. So how am I going to live my life? The last year, I said I was going to go to, do, to, go to school. Are you going to say now? And... Now, what have I done about my school? One year has passed. What is it? So you plan. And then take time to put them to, together. Because it's the picture you paint about the future that will become a reality. Sit down and paint the picture and then see it. And then I pray that somebody will take a step after this morning service. Amen. Shout a better Amen. amen. Don't push it aside. Talk to yourself now and tell yourself truth. 
Because prayer cannot be a substitute for planning. Fasting cannot substitute planning. Faith can substitute planning. Is that clear? Everyone has his own place. You can't use faith to substitute. Because if, if house rent is 70,000, for instance, and you have 40,000, remaining 30,000, and the same by most offices pay bonus. Wisdom demands that you pay the, keep the house rent. Is that true? Well, now you get back to travel. Enjoy your life. You come back, you start believing God for 30,000. No, that's not, that's, not, that's not faith. That's stupidity. There's a difference between foolishness, presumption, and, uh, and uh, faith. Uh, Case surprise wrote a book, Presumption, Faith, and Foolishness. Many people are foolish. That you are born again does not mean you cannot be foolish. They call them foolish virgins, but they did not plan. Remember, the Bible, Jesus called them what? He called them foolish virgins. They were virgins, but they were foolish. Many Christians are what? They belong to the foolish camp. Do you know what I did? I said, due to the one day's fact, I'm going to pray. I'm going to believe God. Oh my God. God can do all things. God said, my stupid son, I can do all things. He didn't plan. They, they, they tell you. <laughs> Amen. I like planning. That's why I've never borrowed. That's why I've never been under pressure. Check yourself. If you don't plan, you put yourself under pressure. It will make you to start borrowing. Take time to plan. Before this money comes, this project should take place. This should take place. That way you'll be, you will never be under pressure. Otherwise, I can tell you come under pressure. It will make you, because when you don't plan, even if you the person, you say, I want to buy it. He says, look, there, there are things that are necessary, but they are not demanded for you now. He says, all things are lawful, not all things are expedient. Is that true? Yes. Is there anybody who does not like a good car? Not one person. It's necessary. But can you afford it? No. So calm down. Your house rent and car, which you confessed. House rent, because you can use public transport. You can't use public house. You must live in the house. Is that true? Uh, so plan. Are you going to answer now? School fees and festivity. Which one should you confess? School fees. Festivity will always come. Enjoy the life too much you have. Don't say, I have to enjoy my life. Is this sin? You know, it's very important. December. Nothing bad. But do you have the money for that? Enjoyment. Plan. No prayer here. Reduce your prayer point in January, please. Do you hear anything? Well, lift your right hand as a father. Whatever makes me not to plan, cast it out of my life. I pray for my senses to come alive. I receive grace to plan effectively. I don't want to come under pressure in the name of Jesus. Amen. So tell yourself, if you borrow this December, first you should know that I did not plan. If by January you are warning people up and down, you do not plan. If by January you are looking for school fees, you do not plan. If you are looking for house rent, troubling people from coming to a church, you do not plan. So now I have told you, take time to sit down and ask yourself questions so that you can live a peaceful life. God bless you. Hallelujah. Now we are going to that 20th session. Hallelujah. How many of you don't want to suffer what the world is suffering? The entire world is going through hard times. You agree with me? It's a global problem. It's not a problem of one nation. It's a problem of the entire globe. The entire globe is going through hard times, but you will never be a victim of it. I want you to know that it's a heaven on earth shall pass away, but not his word. The word of God has the ability to fulfill itself. When God speaks, it's him speaking. The word of God is God himself speaking. And hear what he said in Job chapter 5 and verse 20 and 22. He said, in famine, it shall redeem thee from dead. And in war, from the power of the sword. In famine, he will redeem you. Not he may. It shall redeem you from dead. Famine represents a time of financial hardship. The King James Version used the word famine, economic recession. Are you going to now? When you see famine in the Bible, it's economic what? Recession. It's in the time of economic recession, it will do what? Oh, I know it in your Bible. Oh, I don't put that scripture on the screen. And I, now, verse 20. And famine shall redeem thee from then, and then war from the power of the sword into the two. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. 
Who is he talking to? Whatever is happening in the world, lift your right hand and say, I believe the word of God. What is happening in the world will not happen to me. God will redeem me from all that is happening in the world. Say it in a minute. Now, if you believe it, it is yours in the name of Jesus. In Psalm 92, 12 to 14, it said, Psalm 92, please, somebody you have to bear with me and please. Psalm 92, glory to God. Whoever is in that studio, please, I have to. It said, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. It shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. How many of you are Righteous means the children of God. You shall flow like the palm tree. They shall still bring forth fruit. What? In knowledge. They shall be fat and flourish. He said, but those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the cause of our God. That means, if you want God to bless you, you will not be an outsider. You have to be planted in the house of God. Planting means you have to be solid Christian. You have to be what? It's not what you come one leg one day, the next day you're back again, the next day you come again. No, that's not the kind of people God wants to bless. God wants to bless people that be planted in the house of God. Say so here. You will not be moving to and fro. One day you're born again, the next day you're backsliding. No, no. They shall still bring forth fruit. That means there will be no dry season. There will be no what? If that is your portion, your amen will confirm it. In case somebody is very angry, verse 10. He said, I shall be anointed what? Fresh oil. He said, but my horn shall let us like the horn of any color. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Verse 11. He said, my desire. Verse 11. My eyes also shall see my desire upon my, enemy, on my enemies, and my ears shall hear the desire of the wicked that rise up against me. I decree. Everyone that call himself an enemy to any of us, we, our desires will come to pass. In one minute, you decree where you're sitting, Lord, this is my desire that anyone that wants to stop God's word in my life, what, it is what you say God will confirm. So calculate your word. Lord, anybody that wants to stop what God has for me right now, let them go down. Let God judgment for you. will say what you want. In seven days, something happened to them. Go ahead and say something in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Open your mouth and decree. My desire that anyone planning to attack me must go down. They will not live to execute their plans in the name of Jesus. If you are the one speaking, let your amen and your words be very powerful. My desire is that anyone planning to attack me cannot live to carry out their ass. Open your mouth. Whoever is planning to destroy my life must be destroyed before they carry out their ass. Whoever is arranging any attack on me, the mercy must go down before the attack. Say that. In the name of Jesus. Whatever they are planning, they will be the victims of what they plan against my life. Blessed be God forever. In Jesus' mighty name. First Samuel 16, 13. After David was anointed, the Spirit of God came upon him from that day forward. Every oil in your hand that you brought out today, whether in your house or in church, I decree to not to be another oil anymore. The Spirit of God breathed his bread upon that oil in the name of Jesus. There's only one spirit. There are no two spirits. He said, the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of God is, there is what? Liberty. The same Holy Ghost upon the oil, same Holy Ghost that is where you are. Right now in the name of Jesus. Now listen carefully. Touch that key. He said, where the Holy Ghost is, there's what? Liberty means freedom to be free. It means what? means being free. State of being what? You are not free if you are sick. You are not free if you are in bondage. You are not free. Anything the enemy has held you bound with, you'll be free from it right now. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 3, 17, that's what I'm quoting. He said, we had, now listen, that scripture was given to me last night when I was deep meditation for this service. Now, now, not after. Said, now, now. He said, now, not after. Now, the Lord is that spirit. Capital S. Now, not after. Now. Someone will be delivered as I'm speaking now. Yeah. Now. The Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
being set free from captivity. Whatever has held you bound, your liberty shall be instant. Yeah. Now. Now. Say now. now. Say now. now. Say now. now. I was preaching long ago and a deacon in this church was going to be Lord. His daughter had a psychiatric attack. Nobody knew. I didn't know. I had no idea. They took her. They couldn't stand it. So they chained her. He locked her. She was violent. And came to church with a picture. No idea. Because they could not handle it. It was this wild kind of psychiatric problem. In a confused state, he ran to church with a picture. And I came up on the altar. I said, for this purpose, the Son of God came that he might destroy the works of the devil. As I said that, in at home, she did that. <sighs> he went back, met her sound. It was the same time that word came. He said, now is that spirit. The Lord is that spirit. Where he is, there's what? I don't know where you've been held bound. You sleep in the night. Every night there's an attack. No, that is a demonic force. Every time you want to get breakthrough, you find out that something will just happen and you lose it. That's a demonic force. That's a multi spirit just monitoring you. Anytime something wants to good wants to come, something will happen. He said, now, not after. When? 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 Now. I decree everyone held down. Be free by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, the Lord is that spirit and where he is, there is what? I decree your liberty from that evil right now. Anyone that didn't hear my voice globally, their liberty is instant in the name of Jesus. Even some habits that we don't like, you find yourself going back to them. That is a satanic force holding you bound. Today, you'll be set free from that evil in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, say amen like a believer. If you believe it, say amen like a believer. Now here it is in 1 Samuel chapter 10. It said, Then Samuel took a veil of oil and poured upon his head. And Kisma said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be a captain over his inheritance? By the anointing this day, where you were held a captive, you end up as a captain. Yeah. If you believe it, say amen like a believer. Yeah. It said, When that departed from me, Today thou shalt find two men by the church of and the border of Benjamin and Zilza. And they will serve to thee. The asking that I wanted to seek are found. I decree whatever you have lost will be restored right now. You have lost your honor and dignity. You have lost any property. Whatever any of us have lost, I declare today to be a day of recovery. Today, whatever you have lost will be recovered. In the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost has power. I lost my iPad early this year in Berlin, Germany. Very strange. As I passed the security, the iPad was missing. Not that they, they stole it. It's a mysterious thing. The police came, looked through camera. They could not find the iPad. Nowhere. They could not see it. An iPad was, was, was there. With a with locked they talked to me. They said, we can't see the person who carried their camera in the, on camera. Nothing. I just said, yeah, I'll find my iPad. <laughs> now, Berlin to Nigeria is not here. How do you find it? I did, that was not my last bus. From there to Frankfurt, from Frankfurt to Abuja. Before. So, one, so if they want to trace you, how do they trace you? Well, I needed the iPad because of the information on, on the iPad. But can I tell you how humbling it is? The iPad was off. Not that it was on. It's a very strange thing, you know, when it's a strange thing. The man who picked the iPad did not know how to read the owner. Confused. Then one day it just popped up. Just opened it. Off iPad came up with one of our sons here, who is a part time pastor, one of my sons, with only his. Ad and ad this thing is very funny. He just showed on the iPad his email address. And the moment the copy did, it went off. It began to reach, try to read that man in German language. So he said he was seeing it, and was one day who is trying to be funny with him. With uh, so the man tried to write one kind of funny English. 
you know, English I could not well construct it because it's not his language. He says, this, this person has been trying to reach me. He reluctantly, he said, okay, let me, this person can't just be, even if he's a criminal, he can't be every day be sending me a message. He did. He said, please, I'm with your iPad. He said, which iPad? He not knew because he knows about my movement. He said, the iPad I have brought out your email. And he was in London. He said, this is where I am in London. Can you send it? My iPad went from Frank, uh, Berlin to London, London to Nigeria. <laughs> He said, whatever you have lost, shall what? I decree today, everything you have lost, you will recover it right now. That honor that was lost will be recovered as I'm speaking. That glory and dignity will be recovered as I'm speaking. Even marriages that were lost will be recovered in the name of Jesus. Your job, your appointment that was lost will be recovered right now. In the name of Jesus. He said, then that shall go on forward. I decree today you make progress. Retrogression has ended. Stagnation has ended in someone's life. You will make progress if you believe it in the name of Jesus. I'm reading First Samuel chapter 10, please. I'm on verse 3. Say, so I will go forward. Say it one more time. He said, they will salute thee. That means they will greet you. Hey, you will not go anywhere from today where anybody will ignore you. Yeah. Doors will open to you globally if you believe it in the name of Jesus. They will give you two loaves of bread. Without they were carrying two loaves. They gave him two loaves. I declare right now, somebody favor will follow you everywhere. Yeah. When you are asking for ten, they will give you hundred in the name of Jesus. I decree somebody who is in this service favor will become your own portion. If you believe you become the one who will favor, let your amen be the loudest. And through the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shalt return to another man. <laughs> After this day, you become a proverbial wonder. Those who knew you before this service will see a new person emerge. The louder your amen, you have a testimony. In the name of Jesus. Let it be. When these signs are come unto thee, that thou do as occasion serve thee. Every step you take will be crowned with success. For God is with thee. That's verse 7. I declare, in the name of Jesus, God will never leave you nor forsake you. And the question was in verse 11. Is Saul also among the prophets? <laughs> Where you are not accepted before, they will accept you now. They say, oh, is that person among those who are getting married? Is that person among those who have been appointed? Somebody's story will be rewritten right now. Yeah. Oh, is she also among those who are dedicating children? Something that you never had, God will give it to you right now. Yeah. You'll be the next positive proverbial wonder and body surprise to your world. Yeah. The louder your amen, you have it. He yeah. said, and God gave him another heart, ghost. Ephesians 1.13. Today be enveloped with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everywhere we are, all that concerns and pertain to us, evil will never come near them. Amen. That amen is weak. Amen. And the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was now form and void, shapeless, formless, chaotic. Genesis 1, 1 to 3. And darkness began to move upon the face of the waters. I don't know what has declared your destiny. The power of the Holy Ghost will clear it right now. Amen. And God said, Let there be light. I decree by the anointing on you today, glory will rest on you. Yeah. After darkness left, everything God began to speak came to pass. Before then, nothing happened. I don't know what has beclouded your life. After darkness left, he said, let there be light. That was not sunlight. That was let my glory be. May God's glory come upon someone who says amen. Yeah. And then God said, and God blessed them. He empowered them. Now, be blessed in the name of Jesus. It shall come to pass in that day. Say today. The body shall be lifted up your shadow from out their neck. And you shall be because of what? They are not. Every yoke. The yoke of failure. That they look at you and they look at you and your family and say, forget those people. They can't make anything. That yoke will be broken right now. 
They look at you and cast as much as you and they forget him. It's of no use. This day, that yoke will be broken. Whatever they've labeled you, negative thing they've labeled your name with, will be destroyed as I'm talking. The yoke of joblessness will be destroyed. The yoke of begging to eat will come to an end. That yoke is broken in the name of Jesus. If you believe in same man like a believer. The Holy Ghost came upon Mary. Overshadow her. Everyone come barren. We have a miracle conception right now. Your business, your body, not to be burning after this day. The power of the Holy Ghost will make it happen now. If you say amen in the name of Jesus. To everyone sick, I pronounce it healed in the name of Jesus. But hear this. For time's sake, I'll take the next four minutes. Second service and third services, I'll go deeper. In Goshen, the children of Israel did not suffer what the Egyptians suffered. There was a covenant exemption that answered to them and said, I'm the Lord, I change not. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if you did it then, you will do it now. So they made the covenant to answer to me. What is the last were exempted from? They were exempted from stench and decadence. For time's sake, if you read Exodus 8, more verse 22. Why the Egyptians were not making progress? They were, Israel was making progress. I decree today. Whatever implies stench and decadence, you will never be a victim of it. There was serious economic recession in Exodus 9, 3 to 6. All the business of the Egyptians failed, collapsed, but the children of Israel were enjoying economic boom in Goshen. Please hear this. If you read verse 6, and the Lord did that on the tomorrow, and all the cattle of Egypt died, but on the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. <laughs> that death of cattle means collapse of business. Collapse of what? Your business career will never crash. There was tragic occurrence. Tragic what? In Egypt, in Exodus 9 to the 6. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, there was no hail. Hail was falling. He said, Thousands shall not come near thee. There shall not even before the land of come near their dwelling. Damage, flood, losses, destruction of properties will never be your portion. For time's sake, there was serious hardship. There was serious what? Say the truth. Many of you are afraid how you survive, even if you don't say it. But let me show you something. Hardship and famine became endemic due to financial bankruptcy. There was money lost value. But in Goshen, there was so much money. There was so much what? They never suffered any hardship. Right, they lived in supernatural abundance. Let me show you from Genesis 47, and I close. So that's how I go deeper. And when money failed, verse 5, Genesis 47, verse 15, sorry, verse 15, verse 15 and verse 27, look at it. So you read it. Go ahead, want to go. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Jews came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread. Why should we die for money? So money being devalued is not new. Is that true? Is it new? No. Many of you know, I said, I can't buy anything because money has failed. Look at verse 27. Look at verse 27. I want to go. All of you read 27 together. I want to go. Stop. No, don't rush. Where did they dwell? Where did money fail? That you are in a country that's not mean that you suffer what the people suffer. Listen. Read again. And Israel dwell where? Because of success, they call their own place country. Egypt was a country, but you know, that's where you succeed. Have you not had when they say redemption camp? It becomes a country. Canaan land, country. Our own, you hear the name. And because of, they will, you will succeed to a point that they call your place a country. Because of success. And Israel dwelled in the land of Egypt. In the country of Goshen. <laughs> Goshen was in Egypt too. And they had what? Remember, money has failed though. These were people were strangers. And with a better covenant. Hope you know. And they had possession there and grew and, and, and multiplied what? How many of you believe this word? Do you believe this word? Yes. Money failing depicts economic crisis and hardship. That's the meaning. The entire world right now is experiencing undue hardship. You agree with me? High cost of living is now the order of the day. 
While the world is lamenting the children of God, we'll be rejoicing. He said, when men are cast down, then that shall say, so me, I will never be a victim. If God has done it before, he will do it in my life. Say it. If God has done it before, he will do it in my life. Jump on your feet as if God has done it before. He will do it in my life. Right now, all that has been declared must come to pass in my life. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to give you two prayer points. Number one prayer point, you take authority in the name of Jesus over that situation you are facing and command a change of story. Command what? Whatever you're facing now, I say, in my name shall cast out. So that was, and that in the name of Jesus, every name was what? Bow. Mark 16, 17, and Philippians 2, 10. Now in the name of Jesus, there must be a change of story in this area of my life. Go ahead in two minutes and command it. Take authority in the name of Jesus. Mark 16, 17, and Philippians 2, 10. Cast that in out and command a change of soul in the name of Jesus. Are you praying with authority? Jesus, mighty name. Take the oil in your hand and say, In the name of Jesus, I believe in the efficacy of the anointing oil. Right now, all that was said concerning Saul came to pass that same day. All that was said concerning David came to pass the same time. As I am anointed, every word declared right now will come to pass. In my favor. In the name of Jesus. Take a little of your, your fingertip. And now you know what you want. Also, you anoint yourself and begin to pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. Go ahead in the name of Jesus. declare my call to pass in my life. And all these signs came to pass this same day. In Jesus' mighty name. Not one of the signs will fail in your life. 
all that has been proclaimed with the ones you have declared with your mouth in line with God's word, they will all be fulfilled. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you believe it, say amen to that. Amen. Tell God thank you because if it is on, tell him thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Now hear this. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, the Bible declares and made a statement and Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We have just talked about the Holy Spirit empowering you to succeed. But they said, Repent. Do what? Before the blessings of the Holy Ghost can come upon you. If you're in this service all over the world, or you're part of the service or watching anywhere in any medium, and Jesus Christ has not come into your life, just know you must be born again. When you're born again, things will change. Is that clear? Glory to God. Wherever you are, please pray this prayer after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I've come to you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe you died and rose to save me. With my mouth, I declare you my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. If you offer the prayers, keep standing. All of us take their seats, please. They will attend to you. Don't sit down if you offer their prayers.